our study this afternoon. And the delightful lesson that has been prepared for us. How many of you remember the day of your baptism? You don't have to show. You can you if you like. Remember the day of your baptism. Probably all of us will raise our hands on that one. Now, how many of you remember the day of dedication? And not one of the same, as we will see from our lesson. But they are two very sacred days for all of us that that have dedicated. But there may be something happening. This lesson today is going to motivate ones that maybe haven't made a dedication to want to do that. The title of our lesson is, Are You Ready to Dedicate Yourself to Jehovah? Notice the inscription. 116 12. With what will I repay Jehovah for all the good he has done for me? Probably all of us have that, that have dedicated ourselves to Jehovah, have that feeling that deep within our heart. Notice the focus of my lesson. This article can help you to develop a close relationship with Jehovah so that you will want to dedicate yourself to him and get baptized. So for those, we're not yet baptized, this lesson is just for you. And probably uh, for all of us that already, that went through the lesson, we reflected our baptism, we reflected on what motivated us, what led to our dedication. So we want to get right into our lesson. For letting us be able to meet together, to be encouraged by what the faithful slave and you provided for us. We know this. Uh, Wads Tower study was certainly timely for all of these that all of us are going through. We think about those in Haiti that were mentioned and other places around the world that are just going through things that are unimaginable. Just like history has shown how you have always been with your people. You feel our pain and how you'll always be there in the future. And Jehovah, who knows what we're going through today. The David had no idea if his words would be recorded and we'd be talking about him and thousands of years later. Who knows the, the way we handle these challenges that we have. Our example could very well be in the, in the new scrolls and, and how we dealt and relied on you. So Jehovah, please help us be with us, be with all those in our congregation and throughout the world that are undergoing the challenges. We know that you're you're there for us, and we need to really rely on you and count on you. Our efforts certainly give you something to bless. So again, thank you for the things you do for us, what we see as well as what we don't see. And all these things we pray to you. I remember that great example we had from the convention where the sister was at work, and then she put on the spot right there, you know, asking a point-blank question, and um, well, Joe is, is helping us to prepare for that, to be prepared to be put on the spot in essence. And the way she answered it was just so perfect, you know, didn't attack, stood her ground, stayed what she believed in and just said, you know what? I respect your beliefs. I hope you respect mine too. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Those 44 pound hailstones and toss them like a baseball, right? Okay, good. So we're going to move on to And as capable brothers, we are expected to teach the congregation. So if we read and write well, we can prepare talks and comments well enough to teach the congregation. Yes, they can. Said, um, I'll tell a quick story. Uh, my table head at Bethel had been in there for many, many, many years. And I found out how he and his wife met. He was giving a public talk in her congregation. She had never met him before. She leaned over to her friend and said, I'm going to marry him. And she did. So he wouldn't have been in that position if he couldn't read and write well. Mm. Nice point. Thank you. I can't really take uh, credit for this analogy, but 
showing the thinking ability to show respect for sisters is kind of like buying and test driving a car. You think you're finally ready to go and buy that car and you're not just going to buy it, you're going to test drive it. But you're going to use thinking ability not only to not just test drive every car at the dealership, but when you test drive that car that you think is the one for you, you're not going to drive it like a maniac. You're not going to be a daredevil because you might just scratch that car or even worse, you might even give it a salvage title. So you have to demonstrate proper thinking ability when you're test driving and going to buy that car you're going to be with for the rest of your life. Thank you.